Hey everybody, we're right above the southern tip of South Africa. I've been reading a lot on Michael Tellinger. He's been doing work on these ancient circular stone structures that are spread across a wide area of South Africa. And I just wanted to go on Google Earth, see what I could find for myself. If I could actually see these. And what I found pretty much blew me away. He has numbered these in the millions. And I'm just going to take you into a shot of the earth and start cruising and as you can see here these things just start popping up everywhere i'm going to leave the general location for these in the description so if you want to go on google earth yourself and look but it is pretty incredible some of these are easy to see some of them are not so easy to see they have walls and channels coming out from them. They are in forms of certain geometrical patterns. That's what they look like. Go across this way. Zoom in. And he says that there is no two of these that are really exactly alike, which kind of blew me away. But I'm going to take you on a little tour here, show you what a lot of these sites look like. And then I'm going to have Michael Tellinger talk at the end. And he'll give you a good talking to about these very ancient stone structures that are in the millions, I guess, according to Michael Tellinger. And they're in an area that was never really widely populated evidence of a civilization that we have kind of lost through history but it is really incredible and I was kind of blown away by what exactly I found and here is just a little tour of this area and as you can see here you don't have to look very hard Look at this area here. Now I have place marked a lot of these sites where they were numerous and I went over this area pretty good, put place marks down and it's kind of ironic that most of these appear on the 31st latitude line the same as the Great Pyramids. Just saying, thought that was interesting. Now I'm just going to be quiet, take in a few more of these sites and then Michael Tellinger is going to talk at the end. Hope you thought this was cool.
What's so special about the ruins in southern Africa? Well, they're very special cattle kraal for very special cattle, because this is probably where the word holy cow comes from. <laughs> uh, they, because most of these cattle kraal are built aligned to the sun and the stars and the equinoxes and the solstices. And, and wow, they went to a lot of trouble for these cattle, didn't they? And the sacred geometry, and you start seeing how sacred geometric principles just jump out at it, uh, out of these structures, and you realize, hold on, this is not just somebody building, uh, building things you know, to pass time. They were, and clearly, the, this was easy to these people, because every single one of these ruins that is measured, and this is all Jan Heine's original pioneering work, for which you'll always be remembered, because every ruin that he's measured so far turns out to have these very intricate alignments. And this is spectacular. And you'll understand why this is so spectacular when you realize how many of these ruins there are. These, you know, look at this. They're perfect. And you draw a circle over there, which doesn't look, it doesn't look like it, it, it's real. But when you extrapolate that flat line into the circle, you get a perfect, perfect hexagon. When you start joining the corners of the hexagon, look how it touches the inner circle perfectly. You know, this is not accidental, people. This takes real... Um, exact science and understanding. There you go. So these structures down there are not just simplistic structures. They carry huge amounts of energy. And uh, important to note that there are no doors or entrances. This is an important thing that you find in some of the archaeological reports. But, and they say, oh, there are no doors and entrances. And then they forget about it. And then they tell you, it was probably built by a migrating crew, group of 15 to 20 people, and they built it. And you say, hold on, you just told me there are no doors and entrances. And now you're telling me that it was built by people as, as a dwelling. So what's going on here? What, what, what are we dealing with here? And, and you, you don't get intelligent answers from the so-called authorities on this. Um, and agricultural terraces. Thousands of kilometers of agricultural terraces. In fact, more than 450,000 square kilometers of agricultural terraces in a sparsely populated part of the world. Who built these terraces? What were they planting in these terraces? What's going on here? It doesn't fit. It doesn't match. The roads link every stone circle. There's the road there. It's very, very badly eroded, as you can see. Most of the times you don't even know you're walking on these, on these uh, ruins. Over there at the bottom, it used to connect in there, but that looks like water washed it away at some stage. Look at this linking into these strange hexagonal things. There's not enough time to talk about that. But there's spectacular information about what is going on there. Uh, and there's ruins there and there, but they're just covered by soil. This is a beautiful example of a channel running into a sort of with all the stuff around it. The spider's web effect. Look at this. Now, I imagine most of Southern Africa looking like this a long, long time ago. And um, these are all cattle crawl, as I said, built for special cattle. There were a lot of cattle. Boy, they were just, uh, I don't know where the people were, but there are a lot of cattle. <laughs> Hey, maybe, uh, how many of these ruins are there? And this is where the penny really drops, when you start figuring out how many there were. In 1891, the brilliant Theodore Bent, this is one of the only, one of the few archaeologists that I carry real respect for, um, wrote a brilliant book, The Vanished uh, Lost Cities of Mashonaland, and it's a phenomenal um, book. And in 1891, from horseback, traveling through South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe. He estimated about 4,000 of these structures. Then by 1974, Roger Summers, who had more technology available, calculated about 20,000 of these stone ruins. Now, by now, I started going, hold on, 20,000 stone ruins in a sparsely populated continent doesn't make any sense. I got involved in 2007 when Jan Heine introduced me to this. And within six months, I estimated at least 100,000 ruins. So I thought, well, before I release temples of the African gods, I can't just thumb suck the stuff. Let me have some sort of at least scientific argument for this. So I started counting. I used Google and aerial shots and, and uh, just started counting, you know, and extrapolating, getting averages per hectare, per square kilometer, per larger area. And I went all over Southern Africa and found these densely clustered areas and got averages. And... Um, and some of the aerial photographs looks like, you know, there's circles here. When you look closer at it, when you study this, you see how connected they were. Um, this is all over southern Africa. Some of them are in, in, 
in the Transvaal or in Gauteng, what used to be the Transvaal in, in Pumalanga, in the Orange Free State. It's there some in, in Natal, KZN. I just found some in KZN two weeks ago when I traveled to KZN. And I hadn't found any before. So wherever you go, you find more, more ruins. Zimbabwe, Botswana, as I mentioned. Um, and this one I'll be talking about again. Um, this is near a town called Bronco Sprite, very strange looking structures. This is again close to my house. And uh, this is south of Johannesburg. There are thousands and thousands of these south of Johannesburg. And they think they discovered gold there in the late 1800s. <laughs> and this is just spectacular. It's the density of these. This is the other side of Rustenburg where I grew up near the platinum mines uh, on the way to Botswana. This, is just, this runs about five by five kilometers and it's just dense like this. It's ridiculous. And this is back uh, near where I live, just to show you the circles with the channels connecting them and the terraces. And by the time I finished counting, getting all these averages, I found out there were more than 10 million of these. So forget 4,000 and 20,000 and 100,000, more than 10 million of these. In fact, I cannot tell you categorically, it's probably closer to 20 million of these. And, uh, and we'll be surprised if there aren't more. It's spectacular. We're dealing with the largest and most mysterious ancient civilization on earth that no one's paid any attention to until now. 